Hello, and thank you for your interest in hearing my story. My name is Isaac Pino, and I'm here to share my journey with you. AOT helped me learn to live a healthy and happy life, and it can do that for other people too. Before I, I, before I started using drugs, my life was awesome. I had no reason to use drugs, and I was raised in an amazing family. My parents were a little strict, but worked hard to give my siblings and me what we wanted and needed. I can honestly say that I was raised in a loving family. We traveled through Southern California, visiting Disneyland, Universal Studios, and attended to a San Francisco 49ers game. We traveled through San Antonio, visiting Six Flags, museums, and the river walk, we would go camping to Silver Lake, Bonito Lake, and Silver City. My life was great before using drugs. At, at times, I worked up to two different jobs uh, because I enjoyed making money to buy things and most of all, able to do many things. I also enjoyed my family and friends. I really enjoyed my life to a whole. I just fell into using drugs that would turn from being recreational to an addiction. It, it wasn't up until my late teens and early adulthood that I started using drugs. Using drugs impacted every relationship I had with my friends and family. I would be, I would be lying if I said it did not. I've gained and lost many relationships in my life, but the strongest are the ones I have today with my family. My relationships were impacted by drug use because it resulted in me in having rapidly shifting moods and personality and personalities hurting many people around me. Also, it caused me to say and do things to people that were very inappropriate. <clears throat> I, I, I was saying sexual comments to many people, to many females, especially to friends of, of the family. My absurd comments would also lead to saying them to certain family members, which caused mine and their respect for each other to fade away. My male friends were afraid to leave me alone with their wives. Towards the end of, the, of my drug use, I started, I started to get worse and worse that so much of my vocabulary was no longer appropriate. When I would sober up, I would later become disappointed, disgusted, and ashamed of myself. The worst part came whenever I did drugs and had sexual intercourse with females I should not have. I knew I had no business fraternizing with so many females, although we were consulting adults. It still was not right but I was so high that I was not thinking properly at the time. I used so much profanity and so much anger to express my feelings that people started to not like me. I started to realize that I was losing control of myself and that I would bring harm and danger to people around me. My behavior was a shock to other mutual friends and family. So many thoughts would go through my mind while I was high and the depression was kicking in. I did not know how to control them. I would also turn to social media to express my family, to my feelings about myself or if I had something to say about someone. Text messaging females that I know, that I now know were inappropriate. But at the time, I had no idea what I was doing. I was creating a monster and nothing was stopping me. My actions resulted in me to lose many relationships due to the loss of trust, values, honesty, and respect. The reason for this was because I had no feeling toward anything or anyone. I just did not care what I was doing. All I knew is if I could not have self-respect for myself, then I could not have respect for anyone. And no one wanted to be around a person like me. 
My appearance was probably the most important factor why people started to fade away from me because I was starting to lose everything about myself and my appearance was looking was not looking too appealing. My hygiene was off. I rapidly picked at my face, which caused me to bleed and have scars. My eyes were all red and appeared wide open. My mother would say it looked like I had raccoon eyes. My skin became very dark and I was sweating all the time. Throughout my addiction, I avoided many people because I started, I, I preferred staying isolated. Using drugs allowed me to feel like Superman that released the feeling of being numb to anything and everything around me. I remember the best being drugs is that one or second hit automatically put life on pause and kept me from being around certain friends and family. That later became my motivation to get high because I wanted to shut down my feelings for that one feeling. My parents did not raise me this way, and I come from a very respectful family. I cannot really say my life was great before being diagnosed with bipolar disorder because I was already using drugs when being diagnosed. Earlier, I mentioned that my life was awesome before addiction and it was and it was but during the dick it and it was but during addiction and i that was diagnosed with several mental illnesses and that's where my life started to turn in different directions my life was now starting to go bad at the time because i wasn't aware or sober enough to cope and understand my mental health conditions. What I'm trying to say is that during and in between addiction and being diagnosed with mental health conditions, that it is where I can say my life was, was not so great. I suffer from a few mental health conditions and substance addiction due to motor vehicle, a motor vehicle accident an MBA that left me paralyzed and confined to a wheelchair. It is possible I was bipolar my entire life, but using drugs made the symptoms much worse. I cannot say, I cannot say even if I ever never did drugs, I would not be suffering from addiction and bipolar disorder because most of it all started when I had the MBA. Since then, I have felt that my life was not really great, but more my, but before my MBA, my life was amazing. Although I had already experimented with drugs at the age of 19. I didn't believe in addiction since I was using them in a more recreational use and did not think it would be later lead somehow turn into addiction. The first thing I want people to know is that addiction is an illness, but as as bad is an is an illness just as bad as a mental illness. And some people have the combination of both. I also want people to know that there is so much help and programs to help cope with mental illnesses and or drug addiction. There is always help and hope if the person seeking help allows to receive help. Sobriety and recovery are possible, but it also starts with the person seeking help, wanting to get better. Drug addiction, drug addicts are not bad people, but they are sick, and society needs to understand that these people need help to live a high-quality high life. Nothing is, impo is, is impossible if someone can change their mindset. The use of drugs comes from a person's mind and pain, that they are feeling emotionally or physically, and sometimes both. I, as an addict, would hold on to my feelings. Therefore, the use of drugs was used to cope with feelings, and that's why addiction was at a rise for me. So I would not feel anything real. I, I really think addiction 
and illegal use of drugs are dangerous and its long effects should be taught more in schools to reduce the use of drugs and help people by learning to say more than just no, even as a child. That can save lives and maybe reduce the chance of somehow of someone becoming becomes addicted. AOT is helping me in so many ways I did not think was possible. It is teaching me to find the person I really am. It is it, it has helped me find honesty within myself and I and I has and I will I had I has thought oh it has taught me to learn to love myself enough to help pe other people around me. The many tools and strategies in AOT have allowed me to stay clean and sober, and I am working well with others because this is something I wanted to do in my life. With their assistance, I can set and accomplish many goals where whether they are short or long-term and permanent goals of mine, like staying sober. With this, I can maintain sobriety as well as maintain my mental health and my mental and physical health. When I when I started first started AOT, they validated me as a person and, and took into consideration many of my concerns of how I would stay sober and what would it mean if I were to relapse. I even wondered what if the program was not for me. I was wondering and asking myself the what ifs. However, they had many ideas to share with me on how to deal with mental relapse, such as writing or talking about a certain thought or mood and the use of many activities, such as drawing members of my family on a piece of paper and then tearing it up and trying to put the pieces together which showed how I can destroy my family and friends and how difficult it is to mend those relationships. We, we use tools for, me, for meditating, to listening to music and going out to do things. I, 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 I live without, to do things I live without the use of drugs today. AOT worked with me by letting my parents join in some of the sessions just to show them how much I was progressing in the program. The AOT set the same goal as me to stay sober and complete a successful program. AOT taught me how to work with my thoughts and actions by simply avoiding any type of places where there would be drugs to hanging out with people who do not use drugs. The simplest and smallest things are the are what, what can count the most and it's mind over matter. Of course, everyone's journey is different, but AOT helped me build up a character resiliency. The program also seeks help in many areas outside of their department for me to participate in and guide me with many resources to help understand that there is always help for my mental health and drug addiction. Setting my goals uh, through AOT has allowed me to make my life and future, and future very promising and most of all has helped me build a healthier relationship with family and friends. The program has taught me to avoid places and let go of people who are not healthy for me. This all helps me stay motivated to stay sober day to day. I still attend and go places, but without using any type of drugs. I would strongly recommend an AOT program for anyone that wants and is seeking help. Joining an AOT program is an amazing experience that would be the best and would be the best decision an addict can do for his or her life. I requested an extension on my, of my AOT order, not, be, not because I am incompetent or do not have the confidence enough, but to learn more and be as productive as I can be before I accomplish my goal of completing the program. I feel 
the more I, the more a person gets to learn that, that more the per, that person can help succeed and accomplish his or her goals. The AOT team I'm working with are working with me to find programs I can join and be aware of the of be aware of to help me. AOT to me looks like an amazing tool to have during recovery because they make me feel safe and make my voice feel heard. Due to the pandemic, I recently started attending hearings or better known as roundtables in person. Being able to attend, I have met some so some other some other people from the program. I am asked questions by members on my AOT team, such as how my sobriety is going, how do I feel about sobriety and the AOT program. The question that always comes up is that I if I think the AOT is working for me and if I want to continue with the program. I I am also asked how are things going on in my life? What do I think I can work on to make my situation better? I answer based on how I am feeling. And of course, they also guide me with suggestions on trying to accomplish those goals. For example, my OT team meets me where I'm by understanding that I have cravings or triggers throughout the year, but they suggest I stay away from people and places that might give me the urge to get drunk. And that is a great suggestion from them that I listen to and agree with. Another suggestion from my AOT team is for me to take my medication exactly as prescribed. I do take my meds as prescribed because doing so helps keep my symptoms managed and keeps me out of the hospital. When I first enter the room, I am a bit nervous. And as the hearing goes on, I start to feel comfortable as the judge will ask me about my interest in hobbies or just ask simple questions. I never knew how huge my support team was until I was in, uh, when I saw, until I saw everyone in the room and it does not, and it does, and it does make a difference to see everyone in person as to video hearings throughout the pandemic. I feel being in person is definitely more effective because both my team and I are interacting and establishing better eye contact, use of body language, less distractions, and fear of communication due to the possibility of technology failure. I personally prefer the in-person hearings of AOT more than via computer. Before AOT, I was not taking my medications as prescribed. My AOT team helped me reach an understanding that I needed to take my medication as it is prescribed to help me live a healthy and happy life. My AOT team helped educate me on the importance of medication, how the medication affects my brain wiring, and, be, and being educated about the difference between street drugs and prescribed drugs. In fact, with the, with the help of support of AOT treatment team, I am now approaching a year and a half of sobriety. I am also learning to love my family, my friends, and myself. I hope that sharing my story with you today will help others see how AOT helped me and can help do the same for others like me. I'm in the process of finalizing a personally, a personal, lies, a personally speaking blog that will be published by the Treatment Advocacy Center. And I hope you all share it far and wide. Thank you.